Okay. So now again, I make my, my little heading. Test differentiability. Okay. Now we've already graphed this, so you should be expecting a particular answer, right? But we still want to show what that answer is. The condition for differentiability requires a derivative. So I'm going to need to differentiate this guy. It's a piecemeal function. So unsurprisingly, it has a piecemeal derivative, right? I differentiate one for a certain domain and I differentiate the other for the different domains, right? So here's what I'm going to get. Let's see. <laughs> Actually, that was pretty bad. But anyhow, uh, this one's okay. Okay. How is it hard? Why is it like a It's It really is just practice. Don't worry. I've drawn many thousands, tens of thousands of bad curly braces before I arrived at. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So what have I done? All I needed to do here, they're just, they're simple to differentiate, right? 3x squared, negative 1, 2x, this guy just drops off. Okay. I'm going to go through the same process, but I'm just going to do it for the derivatives, right? So I'm going to say the limit as x approaches, let's go from the left first. So that's negative 1 from the left, okay, of dy on dx. Well, which derivative am I interested in from the left? I am interested in this derivative, aren't I? Because it corresponds to this graph. And you can check out the domain to verify that, right? So I'm interested in this limit. Didn't need brackets, but that's fine. There's no denominators, so there's nothing stopping me just evaluating it, right? So I'm getting minus two. Not surprising, because look, it's dropping like a rock as you approach from the left. Now I evaluate it from the other side. Limit. X approaches negative 1 from the right, from above, of the derivative. And then I carefully look, and obviously it's the other part of the piecemeal function that I'm interested in. Okay. So what am I getting here? 3, negative 1 squared. What happens to that negative 1 squared? It's just one, so I'm getting two, and they don't match. In fact, they are opposite to each other, okay? So therefore, I would say, blah, 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 is not equal to its corresponding derivative from the other side. So therefore, it is not differentiable. But it's only really not differentiable at that one point. Correct. Okay. It's differentiable, and you can show this, in fact, um, let me just finish writing this. When you go ahead and you test it for x equals 1, positive 1. Yeah, that's right. When you test out, I mean, we can just quickly um, informally rehearse it right now. For x equals 1, what's happening to this? This will be 3 times 1 minus 1. It'll be 2. And then for this, it'll be 2 times 1, which is 2. So that's why you get this smooth curve actually happening there, right? So at x equals 1, it is differentiable and everywhere else. Okay. Absolutely, exactly right. The other oh, way and you can't yes, you that's exactly right. So, yeah. so what I did was I introduced you with hey, please draw this right because this were these were functions of sufficient ease that you get a picture and then that picture informs you as you go through this and you can anticipate what the answer will be. But it's not that hard. You could do this. You could craft a pair of functions or some piecewise piece of rubbish, right? It's like, I have no idea what this looks like, and this is your tool, right? You're like, I don't know if it's going to be smooth. I don't know if it's going to be differentiable there. So you go through the nuts and bolts, and then you find it. It is or it isn't. Okay, and then you graph it accurately from there. Good question. Any other questions? Um, so the point I was about to make was that um, because we've differentiate the, um, the, the cubic function, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we can use it to find what we what I would call the local maximum and local minimum. You mean these guys? Yeah. Yeah. Where yeah. So we will, we will get to that in term four, actually. Um, in the past, when you were drawing a cubic, right, <coughs> if the cubic looked like this, 
you had no idea really where those points were. You just had, had to sort of guess, okay? But now you know calculus. The, the significance of these two points is if you would draw a tangent, do you guys know how to find tangents? The tangents here and here will be horizontal, which corresponds to a gradient of zero, zero right? So if you find where the gradient is zero, where the derivatives are zero, then off you go. In fact, with this one, you can pretty easily see to solve for this being equal to zero, you're going to get um, x squared equals a third. So you're going to get x equals plus or minus one on root three. Uh, who knows what that is? But that's going to be these um, x values. And then you can substitute it in. Okay. We will get to that later on. I didn't mention one more thing because it wasn't relevant to this question, but it will be relevant later. See how we did continuity? And then we moved on to differentiability, yeah? Obviously, if you're not continuous, like if there's a break, you can't possibly be differentiable, right? Like our um, uh, uh, non-technical adjective, not adjective, synonym for differentiable is smooth. I actually talked about this when we were talking about rational functions, right? It's, it's smooth or it's not smooth. Now, you can't ever be smooth if you have a break. Right? So if at this point you're like, I've proved it's not continuous, you don't need to go any further. It's not continuous, it can't be differential. Yeah. Okay? So do you need like Last one. Um, can you write the reasoning for what you just said? As sure. Like why? Yeah, okay. Like if it's not one, like if it's not continuous. If it's not continuous, then it's one. That's literally what I would say. I'd say, you know, uh, let's see. Limit as x approaches a... I'll pick a number, pick a number, like zero, uh, is not equal to the limit as x approaches zero positive of that. Oh, by the way, in exactly the same way, see how I need all three of these, all three of them? If I do these two and they're not equal, it doesn't matter what the last one is, right? You've already proved that they're not equal. So if these two aren't equal, therefore it's not continuous. In this case, I've had zero. At x equals zero. Therefore, like literally no more, no more deduction between them, therefore not differentiable. Um, continuity is a precondition of differentiability. So you've got to have the first to get the second.